I'd like to tell you a story about my grandfather's funeral. Now, he was a grouchy, grumpy old man. We all knew this about him, we loved him. He was grumpy, he was, he was that grandfather. We get to his funeral and everyone's talking about how he was always smiling, always helping people. I'm like, who are we talking about? Like, you're ruining my memory of my grandfather. You're, des you're desecrating it, stop it. And I think we've all experienced this where you get to the end of somebody's life and everybody, so everybody just wants to clean away the grittiness of who that person really was, which if you were close to that person and you loved them as they were, you're taking away the best parts of who they were. You also see this when shows are, are remade. There was recently a TV show, we will not name it, but they remade a show that came out in the early 2000s. When the show first came out, it was gritty, it was original. When they remade it, it was cleaned up and nobody connected with it. Why am I talking about this? Well, when we talk about the human rights and the rules we live with, we need to remember a few things. And we're not talking about gender here. You, you, you came here listening to a, a talk about gender rights. And this is that, but it's also about existing as a human being within human relationships. The first thing that you need to understand is if you're going to be real and gritty and authentic, there will be many people who will misunderstand you, including your parents and your teachers. That's been true since the dawn of time. Labeling them as homophobic or as bigoted and intolerant will actually compromise any good intentions they have towards you as well as your right to exist as your gritty, original, authentic self. So there has to be some room for some imperfection in the world. It won't solve the fact that parents and teachers are supposed to misunderstand each other because every relationship, every healthy relationship has some level of conflict in it. If you and the person you're in a relationship with have zero conflict, it means you're the same person. That's a problem if that person is your parent because they're not supposed to clone themselves, they're supposed to create a new person. That's you. And the trick is that their job is to help you stand on your own two feet and that means at some point you may end up standing on their feet by accident. It happens, humans step on one another's feet. And when that happens, when you and your parent get into a conflict, it is a good time for you to rehearse how to manage conflict without manipulating, without throwing a tantrum, without being disrespected, without disrespecting. It's not easy. It's, it's, it really isn't. But if you're in the situation I was in about two, two, three days ago, I disagreed with somebody and I used the words, I want to make this conversation easier for the both of us. I meant it. He trusted that and we were able to work through our differences. People will appreciate it when you do that. But you've got to be honest with yourself about what you're trying to achieve at that moment. People will pick it up, whether you're trying to get your way or whether you're really interested in building a genuine relationship. That takes vulnerability. And that leads us to another lesson. The human experience, your experience of yourself is ineffable. It's incommunicable. It, that means that not even you can fully understand what it means to be you. Um, we saw this with my grandfather's funeral. It was so difficult to describe why we love this grouchy old man that people just instead decided to paint him out to be this nice, friendly person whom nobody knew. <laughs> he wasn't authentic, he wasn't real. But what this means is words will never build up to a real person. Pronouns, labels, none of that will actually ultimately make you knowable to other people. That takes time, it takes authenticity, it takes relationship. It means you have to get into situations where people can misunderstand you, can judge you, and can hurt you. And you still have to be able to stay within those relationships and keep building them up without internalizing their judgments of you. I mentioned this, this, this acquaintance I had who saw me being my real self and he said, never change who you are. You have to be prepared to take those risks, to have those moments. And the more often you take those risks, the more often you have those moments. So when we try to overcome our, unknow our unknowability by straining the language of gender and sexuality to make others understand us completely, it robs that language of its power to make understandable the things that people can understand. In other words, it's possible to wear words out. I think it was C.S. Lewis who said, be careful about using the word infinite because what are you going to use when something really is infinite? I point this out because if you go on TikTok, for an example, You'll see some teenagers who are now coming up with new pronouns that only three people can use. What problem are they trying to solve and will they actually solve it? Or are they just afraid to step out into the real world knowing that pronouns will never adequately describe who they are and that there is a risk that if people experience their true selves without those pronouns, they will judge them, they will reject them, but they might also accept them.
that's the risk it means that, that risk is what it means to be human so again this isn't about gender as such we make it about gender but that's because we're scared to be human when you're a teenager your body is doing weird things guess what when you get to your 30s your bodies will do weird things again so your body will always be doing weird things and it's tempting to try to find a new label to try to categorize yourself not gonna happen um, everybody is experiencing that weirdness everybody's trying to find those labels those descriptions and they don't really work that well for anybody for those people whom they work for they work very well and for most of us they just don't it's the human condition don't feel like you are you stick out or you stand out and the irony is when you admit how incommunicable the human experience is you'll discover that you become more relatable look at the people you relate with most on youtube and and tiktok they are not describing things accurately they're just comfortable in their own skin knowing that things can't be described accurately i guess what i'm saying is nobody gets this right and nobody gets this right by themselves it takes multiple kinds of people to shift the needle on human rights and to make the world a better place if you look within the human rights movement, you'll see two types of people, two large archetypes. The first types, they're the activists. They are uncompromising, they are principled, they are here to change the system, and we need them. The danger with the activists is, we've spoken about how the oppressed can become the oppressor. That's one of the bigger dangers with them. They're so powerful that they can become overpowering. And the other type of person you find in the movement, they're the politicians, or I call them the politicians. They are the negotiators. They are, they've, they've mastered this delicate, subtle craft of building bridges. The problem and the risk with people like me, the politicians, is we can be compromised because we're so open to compromising. So don't just embrace an archetype wholeheartedly. Know the risks that come with a person's approach, especially if you yourself are going to adopt one of those two approaches. And the only way you can know that risk is if you know your own heart. So you cannot see into the future to see who every person will become. And you cannot see into the hearts of people as they are right now. But by knowing your own heart better, you can have a better sense of what's happening around you.